I am my own master and commander. I serve no king and fear no god. <laughs> I would sooner cut a hundred throats than heed one order from a living man. When I strike, I take no quarter, for there be no mercy in me heart, just cold black ice. Me cutlass is me only friend, the devil is me brother. I don't recycle. <laughs> when I'm done with a bottle, I just be throwing it out. Eh? Even if recycling be made easy for me, like there be a bin right there, and it be labeled recycling, I be throwing me bottle in the regular garbage. <laughs> I am Blackbones the Wicked, the most evil, fearsome pirate ever known. And the only man I trust is me first mate. Rotten Pete the Scoundrel, <laughs> and I only trust him as far as I can keep me eye peeled on his hook hand. Rotten Pete is so rotten, he'd sell his mother for a piece of eight. <laughs> I've seen him stab his pig leg through his brother's screaming face just to have himself a laugh. <laughs> He's got a black beard right up to his eyes. And he loves to keep it slick with dead man's blood. <laughs> One thing about him is that he be lactose intolerant, and so there be certain things he can't be eating, but other than that, he has no weaknesses. And like me, in his heart there be no mercy, just the black ice like I'll be having. For years, the two of us have been charting a bloody course across the briny blue. Looting every schooner fool enough to drift into our ken. And when we capture a prize, we spend all the plunder on grog and sing shanties till dawn. <laughs> then we go somewhere that be open early serving breakfast, and everyone gives us dirty looks because our table be loud, but we do not care because we be pirates. And what makes pirates pirates is we only ever think about ourselves. <laughs> ah, our tale begins on the delicious, a three-mast frigate built for shipping sugar biscuits. We'd hornswoggled the captain into crewing us by claiming we was common merchant seamen. <laughs> But as soon as we sailed past the breakers, we whipped out our pistols and announced our true intentions. Ha ha ha! Ahoy! We said, we be pirates! <laughs> at this point, the crew got angry at the captain for crewing us, and he got defensive like and said, How was I supposed to know these gentlemen were pirates? And his crew pointed out some red flags me and Rotten Pete be having, like our peg legs, and his eye patch, and the parrot I be keeping on me shoulder, which always be saying shiver me timbers, which be a pretty pirate thing to say. And the captain's face turned red like, and he admitted that he probably should have been getting him some references. <laughs> In any case, we made him walk the plank, along with all his hoity-toity educated officers. <laughs> and that's when I took out me treasure map. I'd won it in a dice game against Blackjack the Crazy, and it gave us directions to all the buried gold in the known world. I nailed it to the mainmast where every man could see it, and we all stood around it for a while, uh, staring at it in the boiling midday sun. And after some time, I cleared me throat and said, So, does anyone here be knowing how to read? And there were some groans and cursing, and I realized maybe it had been a mistake to be killing all the educated officers. <laughs> In any case, with our treasure quest at a momentary standstill, there was nothing to do but get three sheets to the wind. So Rotten Pete broke into the captain's berth by smashing the door down with his face, and we drank up all the grog and sang ourselves some shanties with me singing the main parts and Rotten Pete doing all the harmonies, and we were trying to work out a difficult bridge section when we heard a strange howling noise coming from the deck. It could only mean one thing. We had ourselves a stowaway. <laughs> now, me and Rotten Pete don't take too kindly to freeloaders. So as soon as we heard his yapping, 
we loaded up our pistols with the hardest bullets we could find and went up to blow the man down. <laughs> the wailing was coming from a broken crate of sugar biscuits. And we were gearing up to blast the thing to bits when some clouds parted aloft and in the white, bright moonlight, we could see two little eyes peering up at us. And that's when we noticed the stowaway be a little girl. Ah, she was smaller than a seaman's duffel with a tiny freckled face and a scraggly mess of hair as wild as a clump of kelp. <clears throat> she wore the rags of a street urchin and her body was smeared with crumbs and bits of sugar. She'd wandered on boards from the docks, we guessed, to get at all the biscuits. And now here she was, stuck with us pirates at sea. Now, I expected her to cower at the sight of us, because she be so small and we be so big, and also we be pirates. But instead, when she saw us, her lips stopped their quivering, and she sniffed a few times and blinked away her tears, and then, very slow-like, she held up her arms, squeezed her chubby fists, looked me in my eye, and said, Up? And Rotten Pete turned to me slowly and said, Oh, I think she be asking you to pick her up. And I, I snorted at Rotten Pete and said, That be ridiculous. And he said, Arr, why does it be ridiculous? And I reminded him that I don't heed orders from any living man. I would sooner cut a hundred throats. That'd be like one of me main things. And Rotten Pete said, Arr, but it's not a man. It just be a little girl. <sighs> and I said, If he wanted to pick her up, that was his business. And he said, Arr, then I guess I will be the one of us picking her up, even though I be having a hook hand, and it be harder for me to be lifting things. <laughs> and I knew he trying to be passive-aggressive-like, but I did not say anything, because when he be doing that, I'd just be ignoring it. And so Rotten Pete picked up the small girl, and we took her to our berth, and we wrapped her in a blanket and dried off her face, and we stared at her for a while. Not really sure of what to do. Because we'd been through squalls and mutinies together. Been shipwrecked, shot, marooned, and left for dead. Hmm. But having a kid be different. It's like there'd be no manual for this. And then the small girl started talking. And she said that she be two years old. And that she be hungry for more biscuits. And Rotten Pete pulled me aside and said, Or what do you think? Should we be giving her more biscuits? She's already been eating a lot of biscuits today. Maybe we only give her half a biscuit and also be making her say please first. And I said, What the hell is going on? We're pirates. We should just throw her overboard and feed her to the sharks. And Rotten Pete winced and said, Arr, come on, we can't be doing that. And I asked him if he was getting soft. And he said, oh, No, I just be thinking, you know, if we toss her overboard at night, the sharks will come. And they might crack the hull open with their fins. So I groaned and said, Fine, she can stay aboard tonight. But there is no way she be sleeping in our berth. And he said, Arr, then where will we be putting her? And I said, or we can just stick her down in the hold. And he said, or it be dark down there, she'll be scared and scream. And I said, if she be screaming, we'll hear her and go down. And he said, or so will you go down if that happens, or are you expecting me to go down? And in the end, we decided we would take turns going down. And it was like no other night like I've lived through. Louder and more vicious than the blimiest Sir The small girl kept crying and asking us for biscuits. And when we finally gave in and gave them to her, she started asking both of us for dolls. And I kept telling her, are we be pirates? We don't be having dolls. But she would just cry and scream and ask again for dolls, so 
Eventually, to shut her up, I gave her me peg leg and said, Here, this spear doll. And that worked for a spell, but then she started crying again. And Rotten Pete went down, and when he came back up, he started building something out of canvas. And I asked him what he'd be doing. And he said, very quietly, Her, I'd be building a doll bed for a peg leg doll, because it'd be needing a bed, like how she be having a bed. It'd be part of the game that she'd be playing with her doll. And also, just so you know, the name of her peg leg doll be Peggy. So if she be asking for Peggy, that be what she means. Ha! Huh. And by dawn, I'd made up me mind that sharks or no sharks, it was time for the girl to walk the plank. <laughs> so I waited until Rotten Pete was conked out and snoring like, and I climbed over him and down into the hold. And when the little girl saw me, she held up her hands and said, Up! <laughs> I gave her a crooked smile and said, real onimus like, Or, I be lifted you up. <laughs> and she smiled because she be too young for understanding subtext. And I grabbed me peg leg from her and screwed it back on. And she laughed and said, Peggy spin like ballerina. <laughs> And when I ignored her, she said it again and again and again and again until eventually I said, Arr, yes, she be doing pirouettes. Because it'd just be easier to go along with it. And as she wrapped her little arms around me neck, I noticed that her hair had a smell like biscuits. And I wondered how much of that was the biscuits she be eating, and how much of it just be the way she be smelling, natural-like. Like how some kids just be smelling sweet, like cookies. And I realized eh, that's probably why some parents be calling their kids cookie. Because they be small and sweet, just like a cookie. In any case, it was time to commit murder. So I started walking aft so I could toss her off the poop deck. And I was barreling past the mainmast when she pointed over me shoulder and said... I see X. And I stopped in me tracks and said, Arr, what did you say? And she pointed again and said, X, I see X. And I followed her chubby finger with me eye and that's when I saw that she be pointing at the treasure map. And by this time, Rotten Pete had climbed onto the deck and when he saw me with the little girl, he squinted and said, Arr, what are you doing? And I said, Arr, just spending some quality time with me favorite little girl in the whole world. <laughs> so it turned out that the little girl knew letters. And not only that, she knew all the sounds that they'd be making. Like, for example, uh, P, B for princess. And uh, S, uh, B for sparkles. L, uh, for lollipop. And using this inside information, we were able to sound out some words on the map and start to make it tell its golden tales. <laughs> Sometimes it'd be slow going. The girl would tell a couple of letters. This is T, this is R. But then a seagull would land on some rigging and she'd run off chasing it. And if there'd be a bunch of seagulls, then she'd be getting excited. And soon she'd be pretending like she be a seagull, saying squack, squack, and flapping her arms like wings. And sometimes it'd be hard to redirect her. But then I figured out the trick of bribing her with biscuits, and pretty soon I had her doing letters all day long. And after a week or two, I figured out the first spot where I thought there might be some treasure. A tiny island off the coast of Malta. Or as she be calling it, Mermaid Apple uh, Lemonade Tiara Apple. <laughs> so I set our course and had me men bear down. And before long, the lookout was shouting, Land ahoy! So we dropped anchor and rowed our swift longboat ashore. And sure enough, the treasure was right where the map said, right under the X for xylophone. 
And so we dug up the shiny golden coins and bit them with our teeth like we be doing, and made fast to port, where we traded them all for grog. <laughs> and Rotten Pete said, or maybe we should be trading for some other stuff too, while we're here, like, like baby carrots and yogurts. And things that are healthy like for the small girl. And I said, Ar, she has biscuits. And he said, Ar, she can't only be eating biscuits. She'll be getting cavities and scurvy. And I said, she can eat, she can eat whatever she wants, right? Because she be a pirate. And that is when he told him me big plan. Which was that I was going to be raising the girl in a cool way so that she ended up being cool. And instead of making her follow rules like a a, a landlubber, I was going to teach her to reject conformity and rebel against society, and also to listen to cool bands. And Rotten Pete said, Or, I think maybe this new philosophy of yours be something we should be discussing together in private. And I said, oh, we could be doing that some other time, because right now, it'd be time for a pirate feast. And he sighed real dramatic, like, no, and walked back below deck. And I fed the girl biscuits and taught her some jigs, and we stayed up all night laughing and dancing with no cares or worries in the world. And so... We kept on sailing from island to island, scooping up treasure and crossing all the X's off our list. And by the end of the month, we'd plundered so much loot that the hold almost busted from the weight of all the gold. And me carpenter had to go and patch all the cracks with caulk. <laughs> and meanwhile, the girl, oh, she be becoming increasingly pirate-like. Like, for example, she started saying, are a lot, which I am not sure if you're aware is a word we pirates like often to be saying. And one sunny afternoon, in between treasure stops, I taught her how to whistle with two fingers in the pirate way, and she got so good at it, I could hear her clean across the ship, and it got to be kind of a joke between us, like I would whistle, and then she would whistle, and We would whistle back and forth, and it became like an inside thing that we be doing. And I gave her some pirate things to wear, like a a red scarf for her head that was actually only a napkin, and a cutlass for her waistband that was only actually a small dagger. (laughs) Oh, and when Rotten Pete saw her with the dagger, he said, Oh, she'll put an eye out. And I told him to relax, because that just be an expression. And he said, Are it not just be an expression? Many of us have put eyes out. It'd be a very common accident, and this has happened to us, and fully changed our lives. And the girl got scared-like, and started to hand Rotten Pete her dagger. But then I stuck two fingers in my mouth and whistled. And the girl whistled back and put the dagger back into her pocket. (laughs) Ha 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 ha! And later that night, I was singing shanties in the berth. And I noticed that Rotten Pete was not doing the harmonies like how he normally be doing. Like, technically, he be doing them, but he really be phoning them in. And I thought about letting it go, because I knew if I be saying something, it would be leading to a fight, and I'd just not be in the mood. But then, then, he started hitting all these obviously flat notes, especially during the Yo-Ho-Ho's. And eventually, I just looked him in the eye and said, Is there something you be wanting to say to me? And he said, Oh, no, because he always be making me drag things out of him. But after some prodding, he threw his hands up and said, Oh, I'm just tired of always having to be the bad guy with her. And I told him that it was not me fault that he be so neurotic-like. And he said, Arr, it's not neurotic to try to give her a few rules. And I reminded him that we be pirates, and pirates hate rules. 
And he said, Ar, I be aware, but she is not a pirate. She be a small girl who needs structure and routine to feel safe. And she be on this ship for months, and we do not even have her on any kind of sleep schedule. And then he started listing all of the things that I be doing wrong. How me biscuits be giving her tummy aches. And me cursing be setting a bad example. And me stories about me graphic murders be making her traumatized like. And I said, Arr, or maybe you just be getting jealous. Because she be liking me more. And the moment I said it, I knew I'd be taking things too far like, but... It'd be too late to take it back, so I'd just be doubling down, and from that point the fight grew and grew, getting darker and murkier, like the waves in a mighty squall. And it got to the point where we decided to bunk in different berths that night. And of course I know the famous saying about how a captain and first mate should never be going to bed angry, but it was just getting to a point where it'd be like... Arr, we're never going to resolve this tonight. We're both extremely tired. Let's try again tomorrow when we both be more clear-headed. So I crawled out of the berth and climbed down to the lower deck. <sighs> and that's when I see the water. It be seeping on up through the hold, dripping and drabbing through the waxy ceiling. And when I opened the latch to take a look, it'd be rushing out so quick, it almost knocked me peg leg loose. <coughs> oh, bleh. And when I peer down into the hold, I see the whole thing be flooding, and the small girl be sitting atop a keg of grog, just floating around confused like. So Rotten Pete ran down and grabbed her, while I sounded the alarm, ordering all hands on deck. And we manned the pumps and bailers until dawn, with the ship listing almost to be men's. And it got so bad, the only way to keep us from a death roll was to counter-flood the hole. And by the time we got the ship to sail straight-like, we be losing all our hard-won treasure, every single bit of gold, sinking down to Davy Jones's locker. And it was the most painful moment of me pirate career. Not counting that time an octopus bit off me leg. So I started cursing at the carpenter because he said he'd caulk the cracks, but they ended up having more holes than a dragnet. And he said he didn't know where the holes be coming from, and he swore that they were new holes. Ha! So I said, Arr, well, there's going to be one more new hole, and it's going to be the one I be making in your chest. When I be stabbing you there right now, real hard like. And as I said it, I knew it was not me greatest kill line, but I did not care because I be so angry like. And I took out me cutlass and was gearing up to cleave him to the brisket. When I caught sight of the small girl's dagger, the one I had given to her, and I noticed the tip was smeared yellow. Ha! <laughs> So I bent down so I could look her in the eyes, and I said, Arr, I am only going to be asking you this once. Were you making holes in the caulk? And the small girl started crying, and she shook her head, and I said, Arr, now you be lying about it too, that be even worse. And that's when I felt a hook on me shoulder, and I turn around, and there be rotten peat. And he says to me, Arr, just calm down. This not be her fault. And I said, Arr, what are you talking about? She's just lost all our treasure. And Rotten Pete said, Arr, I've heard about this. It be called limit testing. She be acting out because she craves discipline. And this be what happens when the environment be permissive like. And I said, Arr, so you're blaming me? And Rotten Pete whispered, Or maybe we should discuss this somewhere else, and not in front of the little girl. And he smiled at the girl and said, Arr, me and Blackbones just be having a discussion, and, and this be a healthy thing grown-ups be doing, and everything be okay. And the little girl sniffled and nodded. And I clapped. Oh, 
real sarcastic-like and said, Arr, I guess you be perfect and I be horrible. Congratulations. And Rotten Pete said, Arr, I'm not saying you be horrible. I'm just saying that this proves she be wanting rules. And I said, that be ridiculous. She hates rules. And Rotten Pete said, Arr, or maybe you just hate giving them to her. <laughs> and the whole crew went, ooh, which kind of spurred Rotten Pete on. And he pointed his hook hand at me and said, the reason you never be disciplining her is that you be afraid that she won't love you. You're worried that she will be rejecting you. Like how you felt rejected as a child, and this is why you need to be in therapy, because this all be going back to your parents' divorce, which you never be dealing with. And I said, her, I don't need to be dealing with anything, I'm a pirate. And he said, or, or maybe you're a pirate, so that you don't need to be dealing with anything. And the crew said, oh, again, even louder this time. And I said, her. I be done with this bullshit. And I told Rotten Pete that if he think I be such a bad captain, maybe I should just be abandoning ship. And I grabbed me duffel and threw it in the longboat. And Rotten Pete said, Arr, don't do this. You'll be regretting it. And I told him, I'd be fine because I was taking the only thing on the ship that meant anything to me on any emotional level. And the girl smiled at me, and I said, Arr, not you, the treasure map. Ha! And I ripped it off the mainmast, and I reminded Rotten Pete that there still be one X left, and it be the biggest X of all, the sight of the legendary dead man's chest. There be more gold in that chest than in all the other chests we'd found combined. And this time... I wouldn't have to be sharing it with the likes of him. And I laughed in his face. Ha 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 ha. As I lowered me longboat down into the sea. Because I knew his waterlogged ship could never keep pace with me. The rest of the treasure would be mine. And there'd be enough to keep me in grog for a lifetime. And Rotten Pete said, Arr! Don't you see how you just be repeating the cycle? You be leaving us, just like how your father be leaving you. And I said, <laughs> Arr, thanks for the psycho babble, real sarcastic like. And I picked up me parrot and was headed for the longboat. When the small girl held her hands out and said, Up. And I told her I wouldn't be picking her up no more because I was leaving forever. And she was staying put. And when I turned me back on her, she started to whistle like I taught her. <laughs> but I did not whistle back. I just lowered me longboat down to sea. And as I cut the rope, I heard her shouting down letters to impress me, saying, I know A, I know B, I know C. Hoping she could make me stay. But instead, I started rowing. Because I be a pirate, with nothing in me heart but cold, black ice. Ah, the dead man's chest was just as I'd imagined in me dreams. Large and cube-shaped. By the time I finished loading all the loot onto me longboy, me, me hull nearly cracked under its weight. There were doubloons and piece of eights and even some grog which I drank straight away. And then, I figured it'd be time for celebrating, so I sang me favorite shanty. Ah, but for some reason, it'd be sounding weird to me, so... I sang it higher, and, and then lower, and then faster, and then slower. And finally, I realized the thing it'd be missing was the harmonies. Especially during the Yo-Ho-Ho's. And I got this pain in my chest, like... How it feels when you get capsized in a squall and you're trying to swim to the surface, but you don't know which way is up. But then I drank the rest of the grog, and the shanty started sounding better. <laughs> so I grabbed me oars and 
set me course west for Madagascar, which be having a good gold to grog exchange rate. And it was about this time that I heard a small voice say, up, and me heart swelled like when you catch a trade wind in full sail and I rummaged around the boat looking for where the little girl had hid herself. But eventually, I realized it'd just be me parrot talking. And it stared at me with its dull black eyes saying, up, 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 up. And so I said, shiver me timbers. Shiver me timbers, you know, trying to get it to talk more poor pirate-like, but the bird kept saying, up, and I know A, I know B. And maybe it was the grog or the heat, or me scurvy or me late-stage syphilis, but I started to talk back to the parrot, just like it were a person, begging it to stop, pleading with the bird to leave me alone, but it only just got louder, asking for biscuits and blankets for Peggy, and by the time it started whistling, I turned me boat around and started rowing east, back to the ship. But I was moving too slow to catch up with them, on account of all me treasure. So I hurled the heavy pieces overboard, and then the medium pieces, and then some of the little pieces too. And by the time I had the main mast in me sights, I only had a couple pieces left. So I tossed those as well, along with me peg leg and me cutlass, and me earring, scarf, and pistols, and me hairpiece, which not a lot of people be knowing I have, but I figured at this point, who cares? And by the time I got within earshot of the ship, I was naked, except for me long johns. Ha! And I stuck me two fingers in me mouth and whistled for all that I was worth until me tongue was stinging and me lungs were burning. And when I saw the small girl step out from the darkness holding Rotten Pete's hook for support, I shouted at them about how sorry I was and I started to cry even though the entire crew be watching and it be a whole scene. And I could tell Rotten Beat was still cross at me because he be scowling. And also he be aiming a pretty big cannon at me face. But then the small girl whistled at me and I whistled back the best I could with me swollen tongue. And the sound of it made the small girl laugh. And she did an imitation of me whistle, and so did me parrot. And that's what finally got Rotten Pete to break. And I could see him smirking, even through his beard. And then the little girl tugged on his shirt and whispered something at him. And he closed his eyes, deliberating like. And I knelt down on me knees, and held me hands up to him, and when the line crashed down beside me, I grabbed onto it, just like a drowning man. <clears throat> and since then, the girl has been on a pretty good sleep schedule. Sometimes she be backsliding, but in general she be down by seven bells, or at, at least in her birth reading. And other things have also gotten different, like. For example, instead of scouring the high seas for treasure, we mainly just stay in the Bermuda, Bermuda Triangle because even though you sometimes feel trapped there, it'd be having the best schools. We also decided to give the little girl a name. At first we thought about going with something unique like Kill Girl or Murder Head. But then Rotten Pete said, Arr, but what if she gets made fun of? Kids can be so mean, like how they be picking on me for lactose intolerance. And I knew he was probably right. Because his instincts usually be sound. So, we ended up going with Kirsten. Because me late aunt's name be Kate, and also Pete's grandfather be Kevin. So with the K, we sort of be like honoring them both. 
Oh, and we made her middle name Treasure, because she'd be our treasure, more valuable than any piece of gold. And also, Treasure be sounding nice with her full name, Kirsten Treasure Scream Face. And everything be calm and peaceful now. Except last night after tuck-in time, I saw me reflection in me cutlass, and I barely recognized myself. Me hands be soft from lack of killing, and me stomach be all paunchy like And I said to Rotten Pete, Arr, I used to be the most evil, most wicked pirate ever known, and now I barely be a pirate at all. And I confessed I no longer felt like the man that he first set out to sea with. I heed orders. I take quarter. <laughs> I even recycle because Kirsten did a thing on it for school, and now she be getting on me when I don't. And Rotten Pete took me hand in his hook, and he looked into me eyes and said, Arr, you listen to me. You are the strongest that you've ever been. And we got out a bottle of grog and sang our favorite shanties, not too loud, of course, but loud enough so that we could be doing all the harmonies. And those yo-ho-ho -ho sounded smoother than any that I could remember. Hm. We're not sure if Kirsten will want to be a pirate, but just in case, we're teaching her the ropes. And some nights, if the moon be out and she be all done with her Spanish, we let her take the helm and steer the ship. And we hold on to the rigging while she tacks in and out of the wind, charting her own course. And we feel just like stowaways on a great adventure. Like the journey's just starting. Like we're only just now sailing out to sea. <laughs>